So you've just built your first PC and you're amazed at how well it performs and how quiet it is. But a year and a bit goes by and something's not right. Your PC isn't delivering the same amount of performance and it seems to be a bit louder than before. So you decide to investigate. You take off the side panel and it looks like this. Okay, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but it's dusty. And now you realize, okay, that's maybe the reason, but what would it be like without it? Many people say that dusting your PC will give you a lot more performance and longevity, but is that really the case? So I'm going to be seeing how much of a performance and temperature difference there is comparing to cleaning your PC out and not. As always, timestamps will be in the description down below, but without any further ado, let's get right into the video. So for this test, we are going to be using my old 750 Ti because it's very dusty and old. This graphics card has kind of just been sitting here since I got my 1650 Super. Wait, what? No. RX 6500 XT and it's just been sitting here in this bag now so we're going to be seeing how much a difference there is on this graphics card but first we need to put this in there so let's do that I'm actually going to need the tripod for this now Alright, screwdriver acquired, and now I need to try and take this graphics card out, which is an absolute pain because in my last video where I did a full review on this uh, GPU, I spent like 20 minutes trying to get it out because it was just completely stuck to my motherboard. Pretty sure that's my fault because I didn't take that out. So, yeah. Alright, and you push the tab down, which is very hard for some reason. Why is it not working? Alright, I think it's down. Oh, okay, right. Graphics card out, nice, and not broken. All right, so now all we need is the 750 Ti. Uh, yeah, okay, it's all right, I guess. It's very dirty, and yeah, but it's more than just static dust on this, and I'll get into that later when we test the benchmarks out, but first, we can't do benchmarks without this, so it's normal like a two-slot card. Okay, that went a lot better. Alright, GPU is in, nice, and we've just got plenty of power cables, so... Actually, wait a minute. Is this... Yeah, it's literally bigger than my old graphics. Alright, graphics card is fully in, wow, it's been a long time since I've actually seen it like this, so... Open the power, and we forgot the cable, okay. Originally, I did use this as DVI to DVI, but I guess HDMI should be fine. Alright. The graphics card is now connected. Let's turn on the power. And it works great. All right, now cut to GPU, I guess. Okay, all the latest GeForce drivers are finally done. And of course, we are going to be using the faithful Heaven benchmark to test how well the GPU is, I guess. And to monitor it, we are going to be using MSI Afterburner. It's pretty consistent and everything. So we're just gonna load this up. Hit F10. And when this loads in, it should work. Hopefully, please work. Oh yeah, see, it's working. So right at the top left, it tells you our power percentage, uh, utilization, and our temperature, which is what we're interested in. So I'm gonna hit benchmark, and I'm gonna let it run like a couple of times, and we'll get back and see what the results are. All right, I am back, and what are the results? All right, okay. So we have 24.5 FPS and a score of 617. All right, not too bad. And our temperature is around about 65, 66 degrees. And it's at 100, and it's actually not that loud actually compared to my 16. No, I keep calling it a 1650 Super. No, a 6500 XT. It usually ramps up to this fan quite a lot. That's probably because it's power draw. It's like 30 watts. Wow. Wait, why doesn't it even have a six pin then? It can just. Uh, okay, I don't know. Whatever. But yeah, those are the results. So we have to beat 65 degrees. So let's take it apart, give it a good clean down, and yeah, we'll see what comes up next. Actually, while I'm taking this GPU out again, I should mention why you should even do this in the first place. So, for one, dust restricts airflow. Eventually, it will build up into the fans and it will just make it harder to get air out and in. This is the temperatures and just gets your dust everywhere. Uh, I forgot this, damn it. Also, another reason is, well, tied to the first point and that's to lower the temperatures. If there's less static air, the air can just freely move about and that will help lower temperatures, whoops. Another thing is that it actually makes your electronic components last longer. 
Wow, okay, wow, this is actually really hot. Alright, the GPU is out, but as I was saying, yeah, the cooler your components are, the longer they'll last, because the more hot it gets, it kind of wears it way more, makes any sense. So you're improving the performance and airflow, as well as the longevity of your system. But enough of that, it's time to take apart this GPU. Alright, so now all we have to do is just take off these four screws, and then it'll open up the GPU, and we can separate it from the fan. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. Okay, all the screws are out, and now we should be able to just lift it up and I think it's best if we take out this fan, and then now I've just got dust all over my desk. And there we go, now we have the actual hardware separated from the cooling system, and the main reason that I also did this, that I didn't mention, is that thermal paste. Thermal paste isn't infinite, you are going to have to replace it over time, but to the average user, you won't have to, but to someone that likes to overclock a lot or is a really big PC enthusiast, you're probably going to want to do this once every few years or so. But to avoid damage for now, I think we should just go for the cooling because there's nothing on it. It's just a bunch of fans connected to a cable, so you can just go. I hope I didn't break it, but a lot of dust just like dropped out. Yet, see? <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to like clean this all off and should do it in a quick time lapse. Actually. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Alright, things are going fine so far, although I would actually re recommend, other than just your standard cloth, you should also have like an air canister or something to blow away the dust because like, you know, yeah, it's just not going to work, is it? But also, I just remembered something, uh, kind of like a story time thing, so two or three years ago when I actually had this graphics card, I didn't clean it for like six months or something and it was like completely caked in dust. So what I did was, I knew that water sh short-circuited stuff. But, yeah, I think you know where I went. So I just compl I just took the whole graphics card as a whole and just doused it in water just because it was so dusty. And it was great at the start, but then I realized I had to wait like seven or six hours with a hairdryer to make sure all the water went out because water and electronic stuff don't go well at all. And if there's a tiny drop of water on the PCB, it will just basically kill it. So, yeah, just something I remembered and I thought I'd just share. But anyways, yeah, I'm just going to... Clean this very quick and then we'll get to how to actually apply thermal paste onto the GPU. Okay, I think that's as clean as I'm going to get these so let's move it to the side. And now let's turn our attention to the PCB. Now when putting these thermal paste on, you can't have any of the old residue on because that could impair the performance. So you have to get like a really small piece of cloth that has like no little edges on it and gently touch it away. I'm saying gently because unlike a CPU, this is the bare die. So there's no like metal on top of it. So if you mess up this at all, you've completely killed it. So it's a high risk, but is it a high reward? And I guess we're going to find that out now. And oh, I just caught off oh, flip sake. This is definitely the most tedious part. I'd recommend that you have like isopropyl alcohol, little drops and stuff to help get it away. And also a toothpick can also help with these little residue on the sides. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to get a toothpick into it. Okay, I accidentally, okay. This graphics card might not work now. I just dropped it because I'm very clever. That's not good, Flip. Well, I guess if this works, then you know that you can drop a graphics card and it still works. No, but for real, okay. So now the GPU is cleaned and we'll get onto thermal paste. Okay, when doing this, you can use any thermal paste really. So for me, I have Arctic MX2 thermal paste. It just need, oh, okay. You just need some regular stuff. And what you want to do, you want to apply a little blob into the center. You can do a line or an X, but this is very small, so you don't really have to do much. And some people recommend that you should uh, spread it all out. What is going on here? Okay. <laughs> some people recommend that you should actually spread it all out, but I find it that when putting the heat sink back on, it just spreads out itself. So that's fine, I guess. So once you put your thermal paste on, you want to connect the fan header first because I find it a lot easier to do it this way. 
Yep. And then you kind of want to lift it up and sort of sandwich it in between. Make sure you're being very careful not to trap any air bubbles in. And also that these little holes line up as well. Because you don't want to move it around too much after. And right, okay, so it's on. And I think I've done it the wrong way. So then you carefully flip it over and you'll see these holes over here. You want to make sure that they're see-through. So you got to line up the holes. Yep, all the holes are lined up, more or less. Yep, there we go. So then you want to get your screws in. So once you have it down, then you want to put in the first screw. It can be anywhere, but I like to start with top left, which in this game is actually bottom right. And you also want to put one on the opposite side because you want to do the start of star pattern. You never want to do one side at the same time. And on the lines of that, when you're tightening them, you that's the wrong screwdriver. Now when tightening them, you don't want to do it all the way down because then you have uneven pressure and then for the final screw, you'll have a bit of trouble doing that. So you want to push down a bit because they are actually screw, uh, springed in. So you push it down and just give it like a few turns. And once it's in, then you can move on to the next one and do the same thing. So do it kind of like halfway till it's fully tightened. So we're going to do the same thing for these screws. And once you've done this, then you can just tighten them all in, in the star pattern, of course. All right, nice. And that is the GPU all cleaned and ready for installation. All right, so I think now the plan is to finally get this in the PC and see how much the temperatures have gone down and maybe how much performance you can get from it as well, like a little bit of extra overclocking headroom. But first, when you get this in. I just learned a new trick. I think I'm pretty sure it only works with cameras, but when you put it onto the desk and then you take it off, and then everything's just like back to normal. I don't know, it might be a bug or something. But anyway, so far things are looking pretty good. We are up to 42 degrees Celsius right now, but the benchmark has just started, so we're gonna let this run like a couple of times and then we'll get back for the final results. Okay, I've let the test loop a while, and as we can see, we have the actually the exact same score as before. But now we are 5 degrees cooler, which is actually really good. And you might think, oh, 5 degrees, that doesn't mean much. But remember, this is, a, this is without touching any software. So we could potentially overclock this old graphics card even further beyond than what we could do without doing any of this. So just by spending a little bit of time dusting our old hardware and applying new thermal paste, we can get potentially extra performance. And all this while it's being extra quiet, quiet like, look how quiet this is. Actually, you can't listen, but yeah, you can't. What am I saying? It's quiet. Yeah. And I think that if we change a bit of the fan setting with the GPU and with the case fans all around, we could very well get this into like the 55 degree territory, which is really good, actually. Remember, this is spending no money. So we're not, we're not assuming that you've got the thermal paste and extra miscellaneous hardware, like cloths and stuff. We are improving performance just by spending time on it. If, yeah, I, I'll take that, honestly. Yeah, that's a thumbs up for me. And this isn't really best case scenario either. Remember, I dropped the GPU, but we'll forget about that. And also, I slightly messed up the thumb paste application, so if you can get it a bit more dot on than I did, you could get even more improvements. So yeah, that's actually pretty cool, but above all else, above the results and everything, this is kind of a reminder to flipping dust your PC. The whole idea for this video was basically because I saw a picture of my friend's PC on Discord and it was like caked in dust. So I was just like, hmm, how much extra performance did you get just by spending time and cleaning it? So now you know. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Uh, if you liked the video, make sure you like it. And if you like the video, then subscribe. Hopefully we have a bit more content like this coming in the future. But yeah, that's pretty much it for me. All right, bye.